everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, subscribe, post comment, subscribe, like the videos. Oh, so share the videos. I want to thank everyone that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks, there's a link to you down below. Has links to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there. Follow me across all my social media platforms or talk to me because I talk back. Also down there as well as links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages, and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Listen, folks, Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, all right? Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be sitting down. We're going to be talking Jets. I do a live radio show on this channel. Call in. I take live callers. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Now, with that said and done and put to the side, I've come to talk to you folks today about Roger Saffold being signed by the New York Jets. Yes, yes, we made a move, all right? We made a move, all right? Didn't make any trades, okay? No big trades before the trade deadline, but we made a move and we brought in a veteran guard. We're gonna be talking about that. We're also gonna be talking about Dwayne Brown returning, okay? A lot of things moving and shaking around this New York Jets offensive line and we must discuss, okay? Now we're going to start with Roger Saffold, okay? The New York Jets have signed Roger Saffold uh, to the practice squad, and they plan to promote him to the active roster coming very soon, all right? Now, keep in mind that this is, this is uh, quite a deal, okay? Because the New York Jets offensive line has been dealing with injuries left and right, all right? We know that ATV, he's on IR. He's done for the season with an injury. Recently, okay, in this last game, Wes Schweitzer, who was the guy that was filling in there at guard, he is dealing with the injury. He's on IR, but they're saying he's going to be coming back at some point this season. You also got Connor McGovern as well, who's our starting center. Uh, he got an injury as well in this recent game. He was also put on IR, but he should be coming back this year as well at some point, all right? So here we, we just, we're taking hits, okay? <laughs> we're taking hits, all right? Got hit. At guard, got hit at a, at center. You know, we're, we're just taking shots, okay? So the Jets have went out and grabbed, you know, a veteran offensive line coming here and help us out, all right? Now, keep in mind, Saffold is 35, and in 2002, he was actually with the Bills, all right? He was with the Buffalo Bills, all right? And uh, I remember that. That's why when he was brought in here, I said, okay, you know, He's decent. He's a decent guy. Not, not you know, all pro, but he's a guy that can come in, quality depth piece. Now, he also has a relationship with Keith Carter, our offensive line coach. They were also in Tennessee together over there with the Titans. So that's good, you know, to hear that he has some familiarization with our coaching staff, a, a person within our coaching staff. So, of course, you know, that type of familiar, you know, face, that type of, you know, familiarity with what that coach expects is going to be big, right? Because it's going to help him come in and be able to compete here. Uh, you know, Saffold also, the, another thing about him too, is he's a guy that has some flexibility. He can play guard and tackle, which is big because look where we're at right now. We're dealing with injuries a lot along the offensive line galore, right? So, here, you know, he can fill in at that right guard spot if they choose to do that. And who knows what happens as the season continues on. Maybe we have an injury at tackle, knock on wood. I don't want to see that happen. But, you know, if it does, then he can fill in out there as well if need be. So that's big. That flexibility is really, really big. Now, like I said, he's not a like an all-pro guy at this point, okay? He's a guy that's going to be able to come in here and hold the fort. He's going to be a depth guy a quality piece, a lineman that you can put out there, that's going to be okay, okay? He's going to be okay. He's not a, not like the best guard in the league, but he's going to be all right, okay? He's going to be all right. Now, another another uh, tidbit to, to talk about the offensive line, when we talk about the guard spot, Tipman was actually back at practice stretching today. Now, we know he's been dealing with the quadriceps injury, so we're going to see exactly what happens with him. I believe they were saying he was week to week. I know Robert Sella talked about him being a quick healer. I don't want them rushing him back before he's ready because, again, that young kid has really shown that he has some chops in this league, and he might be able to really – again, we all knew that he was solid when we drafted him, but he really has come along very quickly and been able to really put some things together out there 
in his rookie year along the offensive line. And we drafted him as a center, but he's actually playing a guard, and he looks really, really good. But he was at practice again, stretching, so we'll see when he gets put back out there. But again, he's been talked about as being weak to weak with the injury. So that with the signing Saffold has been, you know, really, really solid news. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about here, Dwayne Brown. Dwayne Brown has returned from the IR, from the injury, okay? He's back. Um, he was actually at practice today as well. There's been a lot of talk since he's been uh, back on the field. Uh, we'll see what they do with him going forward, how quickly they, they, they put him out there. And I think that's the big question for me with Dwayne Brown, you know, being back off that IR. What are they going to do with him? How are they going to deal with him coming back? Does this mean that he automatically gets put back into the starting lineup as New York Jets starting left tackle? Is that what this means? Because Dwayne Brown cannot play right tackle, okay? I know there's a lot. And I've had discussions with so many Jets fans, so many. And they're like, well, listen, Makai's playing great at left. Just put Dwayne Brown at right tackle. It don't work like that. That man has never played right tackle in the league, in the NFL. He's never done that, okay? He's a guy that if you bring him in and you, you, you want to start him or want to put him out on the field, he can only play left tackle, all right? And that's where my concern comes. Because right now, Mekhi Becton's looking really, really good. He's looking really good at left tackle. He's healthy. He's out there handling business. The last thing I want to do is shake up the continuity along this offensive line and move guys around that don't need to be moved and put Dwayne Brown back at left tackle, right, and move Mekhi Becton over, and then it jacks up some things. I don't want to see that happen, even though I fear that that's what's going to happen, okay? Um, even Mekhi Becton, who was asked about, you know, possibly moving to left tackle because we know, uh, you know, Dwayne Brown is back. He said, hey, and I'm paraphrasing, he just basically said, hey, I'm open to it. I'm ready to go. Wherever you want to put me, fine. I don't care. As long as I play, I don't care where they put me along the offensive line. That shows great maturity with Makai Beckham, right? But it's also a very smart play on his end. As we know, Makai Beckham did not get a fifth-year option. So this upcoming offseason, the New York Jets are going to have to make a decision. And if you're trying to re-sign Makai Beckham, if you know he hits that free agency market, good luck. Because uh, he's already shown the league that he can be a very good left tackle, which that in itself will get you paid just out of the door, right? But if he can not only show the league, I'm a great left tackle, but you can put me at right tackle too, and I'll be dominant as well. Brother. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you, you... <laughs> You are in for a world of hurt if you think that you're going to get some type of discount or a deal from a guy back in with that, you know, in his pocket. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> Good luck with that. With that resume in his back pocket, there'll be teams lined up ready to talk to him immediately, knocking on his door with bags full of money saying, is this enough? If it's not, we can go back to the car and get some more. <laughs> it's just... Man, that, that's going to get ugly. But the situation with Dwayne Brown, I want to see what they do, man. I don't want to see this guy just thrown back in at left tackle. I know that there's talks of him coming back off that shoulder injury that he, you know, he's feeling better and maybe he shouldn't have rushed himself back and all these things. But to me, when we put him out there, he looked old. He looked stiff. And I guess at this point, we're going to see what he has. And we're also going to see how the New York Jets coaching staff handles this situation. I know Sully has talked about not wanting to shake up the offensive line and not wanting to move guys around too much, but he's also talked about playing the best five. And when asked, he said Dwayne Brown was one of their best five. Okay, so we'll see what happens. Listen, comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you folks feel about this situation? What are your thoughts about us signing Roger Saffold? How do you feel about Dwayne Brown coming back? Okay, what do you think that they should do if you were Robert Sella? How would you deal uh, with the situation of him coming back? What would you do? Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. You folks have a good one. Peace.